There. I just doubled the value of this machine. <laughs> hey, everybody. The Flash Forge Adventure 3 or the Monoprice Voxel 3D printer is a 3D printer that I can legitimately say I've got a lot of experience with. Not only do I have one at home, not only have I given one away at the Festival of Trees, but we also have several of them at the Makerspace and at libraries all over Southern Utah. They've all got at least one of these 3D printers. And the reason is because I adore this machine. I think that it's got a fantastic workflow, especially suited for new users of 3D printers, which if you're going to take one and put it into a public makerspace, this thing is great. But it's not perfect, as you could expect for any 3D printer priced at this range. And there are some little quirks. You know, the, the easiest and quickest thing to fix, it is not designed to take a regular size spool of filament. They have these three-quarter size spools that fit right in there. But if you 3D print this little adapter, and it can 3D print this adapter itself, and then slide it on there, you can put a roll of filament on there. It even puts it at a little angle so it goes right in. It's perfect. I, I absolutely love that update to it. That's not a big deal. The build plate is a little bit. It's hard to get things to stick to these build plates sometimes. And part of the problem is that their leveling procedure will only allow you to move it up or down within increments of a tenth of a millimeter. And I think there's a little bit of backlash on the Z. So yeah, as it's moving down, it's different than when it's moving up. So you kind of have to like overcompensate. Quite frankly, it usually just comes down to me trying one setting and then if it doesn't work resetting and trying another setting and then keep doing that until i find the right one it's kind of frustrating and especially with leveling a build plate you really really want to have hundreds of a millimeter of difference to get the perfect swish on it and even after that sometimes it just doesn't stick i've i've taken it just leaving a, a container or a glue stick actually the cheap stuff that I get at the dollar store seems to work the best. And just smearing it on and then cleaning it off after every couple of prints just to just to get things to stick. And that's a little bit frustrating. A heated build plate with nice build tack on it shouldn't require that, but it does. But once you do that, it prints fine. Now, I did run into a problem with some of them that I got from Amazon. They wouldn't work with the USB stick that I had, and in fact, it wouldn't work with any USB stick that I had, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was until I took an old micro SD card that I had. Actually, it wasn't even a micro SD card. It was a regular SD card. Put it in a USB adapter and put it in here. This old SD card that I had was of a particular format. It was called FAT. Not FAT32, just FAT, and it required a specific... You, you can take a a larger format SD card and format it fat, but that doesn't always work. I needed the old hardware. And once I had that old hardware, once I could get the old one on there, it read that fine, and then I could load it with the new firmware and then run it, and once I ran it, it was able to read any USB stick that I put in there. Seems odd to me that it wasn't the hardware, but it was a software problem preventing that, and all I had to do was update the software, but I needed old hardware to do it. That was frustrating, but if you run into that problem, there is a solution for it. Just get an old USB stick that's formatted fat, put the firmware on there, and reload it. Boom, you're perfect. Now there's, there's one more. One more that I got to talk about. And to talk about this, I need to pull out that uh, nozzle, which I love how easy that nozzle is to pull out. It's fantastic. If you've ever 3D printed, you know that the nozzle is the part of your 3D printer that fails most often. So getting a nozzle that you could easily change and replace is brilliant on this machine. However, the nozzles that came with some of the 3D printers, most of them actually, 
there was a problem with them. You, you, if you printed too hot with PLA, it would cause serious overheating and it would cause it to stick in there and it would cause it to just fail on your prints. And so you'd have to lower the temperature to get it just right. I thought, and I still think, that the problem is that this nozzle has, uh, th there's no cooling slats on it. It's just got a big tube and it blows air through that tube. And, and that is all the cooling that it can receive. If they had engineered this with cooling fans, cool cooling fins, like we're used to seeing, those little fingers of metal that grab more surface area and direct that to the cooling, that might not have been the problem. And yet somehow that wasn't the fix. I'm not sure what they fixed. I haven't been able to tear down either the old ones or the new ones. But the only difference is that you can see visibly is a little like neck of plastic that sticks up a little bit higher than, than the old one did. The old one, you don't see that neck of plastic. And that neck of plastic says that this nozzle will work, but the old ones didn't. What did they fix? How did they change it? I don't know. But it was an easy swap. Just get the new nozzle, pop it in there, and it's printing at 100% now. So despite, yes, a number of little problems and, and growing pains with this machine, I'm overall super, super happy with them and use them on a daily basis, not just at home, but at work as well. However, there is a topic of discussion about these machines that we can have. Recently, MakerBot has come out showing that they are going to produce a new 3D printer that looks an awful lot like this one, that is twice the price of this one, and they'll only sell you two of them. Plus, they come with a lot of teaching materials. They're very clearly marketing this towards the education market. But what is it about that machine that makes it worth twice as much as this machine? Now, I just laid out a bunch of problems that these machines have that I fixed and repaired over time. But if MakerBot is just taking these machines and repurposing them and reselling them and not fixing any of those problems, that's not going to reflect well on MakerBot. And I don't think that that's what they're doing. I think that they've designed a printer that looks a lot like this one, that has the same size and form factor, but that hopefully has some better engineering on it. And I say hopefully because I don't know what those printers are. I haven't had a chance to have one. But hey, if any MakerBot rep is listening, I would love to tell the world about your educational printers and use them in my makerspace. Now, one of the funnier comments that I heard was somebody said, hey, they're ripping off flashboards. And I had to laugh because if you understand the whole history of MakerBot and Flashforge, Flashforge 3D printers started from a MakerBot design. The Flashforge Creator Pro was them taking the open source designs for the MakerBot Replicator 1 and iterating them a little bit. And you can tell in this printer that it still has a lot of that same grandfathered in technology because when you turn it on, it sings that little song. That was something unique to the MakerBot Replicator 1, and it is still in these. So these machines are using a great great grandchild of the same board that was in the MakerBot Replicator 1. Which means that if MakerBot is in fact taking these printers and ripping them off, they're not really stealing anything that Flashforge didn't already steal from them. Except that Flashforge didn't steal it because it was an open source design. So technically it wasn't stolen, it was just given freely. So now MakerBot's just taking it back. So I guess that makes them an Indian giver, which is possibly racist, but still. Uh, it's, okay, it's, it's, it's confusing and there's a lot going on there, but the point is, the fact that MakerBot is now coming around and designing a machine that looks very similar to the iterations that they've made on the machine, I think is a rather poetic circle of it all coming around. Not counting the fact that MakerBot was bought out by Stratasys and it's not really MakerBot anymore. It's just kind of like weekend at Bernie's parading around. You know what? 
I think it's cool still. So I'm okay with it. I would be really excited to see what MakerBot has done. I sincerely hope it's not just a Flash Forge that they're buying, repurposing, rebranding, and selling back out. I hope that we'll get to see some of that incredible Stratasys engineering go into making a really good printer. And if I ever got one and got to try it, maybe I would say, oh yeah, absolutely, this is worth the $800 per unit that they're charging for it, especially considering the educational material that they're putting out with it, that I would also love to check out because what have they done with it? It, it, it excites, it, it actually excites me to see what MakerBot is doing. So, but getting back on track, the Flash Forge Adventure 3 Flash Monoprice Voxel is my number one recommended 3D printer for a new user. It is to me the easiest workflow, the best to go around. I just, I love it and I highly recommend it and I use it every single day. So that's my re-review. Still loving this machine. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there and hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.